Okay, enough with the settings already. Let's start doing some actual work. Um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, let's set up our uh, navigation menu. So let's go into the appearance menu and click on menus. And you probably don't have any menus right now, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just type in a name and do this yourself. Um, I might give it, give it a name of top navigation, but feel free to name it whatever you want. Um, so type in a name and then click create menu. And uh, on the left hand side in the theme locations box, um, just select your top navigation menu and hit save. And now any menu items that we add to our top navigation menu will show um, in the primary navigation menu area, which is at the top of our website up here where the default home link is. Um, so let's go back here into the administration and I'm going to create a, a home link and uh, I'm just using a relative URL path uh, back to home. Um, click add to menu and then I'll add our home link and um, You'll no, you should notice um, these other panels on the left hand side, there should be an events panel for the events calendar plugin. If there's not, go into the upper right hand corner, click on screen options, and then check the events box. Um, and also note there's uh, boxes for venues, organizers, um, and, and other things in here. Um, this is really handy uh, if you, for some reason, don't see um, a box of um, a box for menu items on the left hand side go into the screen options and look for um, that item and check the box to, to get it in there. Uh, so in our events panel I'm going to click on view all and then I've got my events link uh, that will go to my events page. Um, again whatever I specified as my event slug in the settings the events calendar page uh, will be the link that's used for this events page and actually I can open it up and I can see right here yeah so it's using my genesis dash tut dot dev URL forward slash events so that's going to go to my events page and I'm not going to add anything else feel free to play around with this some more if you want to add some venues um, or anything like that to the menu, feel free to do so. But I'm just going to click on Save Menu and go back to my website. And now I should have an events link in there. Cool. And if I click on events, I should go back to my main uh, calendar page. So that's all set up. Next, let's go back to our home page and we're going to start some work here. Um, let's, uh, all we've got now is the hello world post um, and a standard loop um, and our default primary sidebar widget area. Uh, let's get rid of the sidebar, um, make the home page full width, uh, and then put some widgets into three columns below this. Uh, so let's go back to Sublime Text 2 and the first thing we're going to add is a really handy filter function that controls the layout in Genesis. And I've got that right here. I'm going to paste it in. Um, and basically what this does is uh, this set layouts function lets you um, use a bunch of different uh, parameters uh, specific to Genesis for controlling the layout on any given page. And all I'm going to do here is uh, I want to make the front page or the home page uh, full width content. So I'm just checking if is front page, if we're on the front page, and this is front page is just a standard uh, WordPress conditional function. Uh, I'm going to set the layout variable to full width content and then I'm returning that layout variable back to the, uh, the function. Um, there's a bunch of other parameters that you can pass in uh, in Genesis as well. And let me just paste that full list in right here. So there you go. Um, in addition to full width content, you can also do content, 
sidebar, sidebar content, content sidebar, 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 content, and sidebar, content, sidebar, and full width content, which we're using for the home page. So these are all of the layout options that you can um, assign for any page uh, through this, this filter. All right, so with that filter in place, let's uh, go ahead and save our functions.php file. And I'm gonna go back to my home page. And if I refresh, I should now see it full page and, or full width, and it is. Got rid of my, my sidebar, and now the hello world post, this, this loop actually, is taking up the full width of the page. Sweet. So the next thing, um, the home page is pretty bare, so let's add some event widgets uh, below the loop. Um, the default uh, Genesis theme or child theme comes with three footer widget areas. So let's, uh, let's drag some events calendar widgets into those areas. So go back to your administration and under the appearance menu, click on widgets. And then you should have uh, these default sidebar areas on the right hand side. And here we see footer one, footer two, footer three. So we've got those three footer sidebar areas for um, widgets. Uh, so in footer one, let's go ahead and drag in the events calendar widget. And um, I won't give it a title, I'll just save that. Uh, and then in footer two, let's go ahead and put in the, um, the list widget. And since I'm using the Events Calendar Pro, my um, list widget says Events List Advanced Widget, but if you're using the, um, the open source version, you'll just have the Events List widget. So um, don't worry about that difference there. Basically the same thing with uh, just some added pro features. So I've got that Events List Advanced Widget in footer two close footer two, and then in footer three, let's put in the um, next event widget. And I'm just gonna leave all the defaults there and close footer three, and then go back to my website and refresh my home page. And cool, I've got my calendar widget, uh, I've got upcoming events in the list widget, and then I've got um, the next event widget in the, uh, the last footer three widget area. Actually, let's go back to the widgets panel and I just wanna give these widgets titles. Um, so I'll just give this calendar widget a title of events calendar and the events list advanced widget, that's already got upcoming events. I'll leave that, that's fine. And then footer three, um, I'm just gonna give that a title of next event and save. Okay, go back to the home page. And cool, okay, that looks a little bit better. I just didn't like those empty spaces up at the top. So cool, so we've got um, some widgets on our home page now. Uh, that's looking a lot better. But it's not looking quite as sharp as I want it to look. Um, the uh, widget titles are kind of small. Um, I think they could be a little bit bigger just to uh, distinguish themselves a little bit more. Um, and there's these uh, boxes around the list items in the uh, list widgets, so we're gonna get rid of those boxes too. So first thing, um, I'm gonna right click on this widget title and then click on inspect element so I can uh, actually look at the styles that are being applied to uh, that widget title and uh, where they're being applied. And if I look at right here, so I've got font size 14 pixels. That's the font size that's being applied to that title and the other titles and it's being applied in the uh, default Genesis child theme style.css file on line 730. So let's uh, modify that by going back to Sublime Text 2 
and we're going to go into that style.css file that's in our child theme. Let me actually collapse some of these folders um, right here. Here's our style.css file, and if we go to line 730, I can see right here widget area, header 4, font size 14 pixels. So if I just change that here to 20 pixels and go back to my website and refresh the page, I've got some bigger titles, but it also applied that sizing to the month header and the view all link uh, at the top of the calendar widget. So we want to keep this styling, but we want to bump down the font size there. So that looks a little bit more normal. And to do that, I'm going to right click on this month and year element and see that the font size that's being applied right there. I can see right here that uh, setting that we just changed in the style.css file for the widget area header 4 element, the font size is set to 20 pics. So that, um, that font size is being applied, um, but we want to actually change that. So I can see right here in my events.css file on line 445 that I've got a declaration that um, I could latch on to and apply a font size there. So let's actually do that. Let's go back into Sublime Text 2 and um, this goes back to the overrides that I talked about earlier. We're going to be modifying the stock events.css file. Um, if you don't already have this set up, uh, just create an events folder in your Genesis child theme and make a copy of the events.css file that's in the events calendar plugin folder in resources and then events.css right there. Just copy that file and paste it into the events folder in your child theme. Okay, and we want to go to line 445, and I've got it right there, and we want to set the font size here back to 14 pixels for those two other items. So save, and then go back to your website, refresh, and those links should be back down to size. All right, the next thing I want to do is remove these boxes that are around the events and the, the list widget. So to do that, I'm just going to right click one of the events, go to inspect element, and then um, click into this list item. And I'm going to look at the CSS. And the first declaration here, I can see that there's a border bottom being applied. That's fine, we want to keep that. I'm going to scroll down a little bit further, and I can see that there's uh, this declaration for uh, three different classes uh, where a one pixel border is being applied in the child themes style.css file. And if we toggle that off, um, you can see how the events look much better. So let's get rid of that. Um, I'm going to go back into Sublime Text 2 and I'm going to scroll up uh, right here to line 419, uh, actually 416, where I've got some existing styles that are being set for um, the events list widget. So I'm going to copy this selector for the events li list widget uh, li element. And I'm also going to add a selector for the events advanced list widget uh, just for uh, the pro users um, because the open source plugin uses the events list widget class and the pro widget uses the events advanced list, list widget class. Um, so all I have to do now is just give this a border of zero and if I go back to Chrome, refresh, boom, those boxes are gone. So that looks much better. All right, and that's the end of part two. In the next part, we're going to take a look at customizing breadcrumbs and working with some events page-specific sidebars and a few other miscellaneous tweaks to hopefully get you, you on your way to working with the events calendar plugin and the Genesis theme framework.